reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter One. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Hello, everybody. My name is Sonic Lightning Bolt, and welcome to Beacon Pines. Uh, so this is actually a re-record of a video I had planned a while back, um, and sadly OBS had an audio bug, and my audio got all screwy. All right, had to get my mic set up there for a minute. But welcome to Beacon Pines. But it's fixed, everything's good. I was gonna play this to welcome in October and the spooky month, uh, but uh, of course things always get delayed around here. Uh, but here it is! Uh, this game was recommended to me by my buddy Usetunes, who always is recommending me games apparently these days. Um, which I'm not complaining because this game looks absolutely amazing. Uh, the art style is beautiful, the sound design is awesome, and the music, as you can hear, is beautiful. Uh, so we are just going to get right on into it. Hey dad. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died. And it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Me too. Hey, Luca. I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. <laughs> well, after I banged on your door till your grand answered, and after I checked the pond, and climbed up to the treehouse, then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes, and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone, too. She's not gone. She's just... missing. Sorry, I, I meant to say since she went missing. She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, Dad. See you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. Alright, coincidentally, it is my dad's birthday at the time of this recording, so ha ha ha. Dandelions! Nope. Bless you. Tickle. Tickle. Wonderful! I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Hey, yo. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Alrighty. So, I got a little bit into the beginning, so some of the things are gonna, you know, be familiar to me. But this is kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure book. Uh, oh, bless you. 
So, uh, it'll be explained later, but these little charms are, like, the different paths you can take. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Lolo looked to the side suspiciously. Ship the eyes, ship the eyes, ship the eyes. Not here. They might be watching. They who? Shh, not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. Alright, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at this welcome sign. Your Gran still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. She moved in like half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. Suit yourself. I won't be long. Bye, Rollo. Tell Gran before heading out with Rollo. Alright. Uh, tickle. Missions. Tell Gran. Yep, we read that. Alright, here we go. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Of course. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? I do indeed. There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Alright. I also love the look of this house. It's very cozy. Very, very relaxing. This is the kind of cabin I'd like to have one day, maybe. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. <laughs> Isn't everybody's grandma's house? Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. <laughs> I also like the fact that we can do this. Just chill, Axel. Ponder. We are pondering why flowery, flower, flowerly fabric is seen in a lot of grandparents' homes. Not that we're judging, but we're pondering. And we slide out of the chair. I love that. Books. Uh... One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. No. Oh. This game will, I mean, it already hits you like a freight train with, with the feels. Um, I wasn't expecting it the first time around. Just some dusty knickknacks. Ah, yes. But even that I've played a little bit of it before already, I'm still getting hit with the feels. Uh, was there anything hidden over here? No. Uh. <laughs> the only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Old hutch. Scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. You never know when any of those might come in handy. Junk! An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Alright, don't want to let the, don't want to let the cold out. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Yeah. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. Uh, we noticed. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Very well. And this garden is absolutely beautiful. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. <laughs> I don't think she needs help with that anymore. Hey, Gran. I'm gonna go... For Pete's sake, go change out of your pajamas before you say another word. But... But nothing. Inside clothes are for inside. And outside clothes are for outside. Lucas stared at his feet and muttered under his breath. Mom always let me wear my pajamas in the garden. 
Well, Eleanor isn't here, is she? Now go upstairs, change, and then we'll talk. Damn, Grandma, you don't gotta right, be so mean. Of course. I forgot about the pajamas. Hey, man. I walk around in pajamas any day of the week, outside. I don't care. All right. We're gonna go get some PJ or get out of our PJs. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Oh, little buddy. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Hide. Some things do indeed. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. <laughs> chill. I know they say it's the first day of summer, but it looks like fall. <laughs> Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Ooh, what you reading? Some of those murder mystery thrillers. Spooky ghost stories. All of the above. Alright, Grandma, I got my sweater on. I'm gonna go outside now. Okay, I'm gonna go hang with Rolo for the day. See you later! Hold up now. Where are you and Rollo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. <laughs> Alright, here it is, our first decision. We are off to go. Chill for the day. We were just gonna go chill for the day. Just chill. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. Me too, buddy. Well, make sure you are done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. A grand jury. All right. So we've used chill, so now we can change it up. I'm gonna say ponder. We're gonna go ponder. Just gonna go ponder for the day. We were just gonna go ponder for the day. Oh, really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day, exactly? This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Um, you know, big stuff. Small stuff. Medium. Mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburden yourself with the preponderance of pondering. Huh? Oh, forget it. Off with you now. Cool, bye, Grand. I'm totally not gonna go in the woods and, uh, I mean, uh, Owen oh, Luca. You and Rollo stay out of trouble. I know, I know. Get in the trouble with Rollo. Hell yeah, man. That's what summer's for. Alright. Off we go. Come on, come on! Woo! And there he goes. Dang it, Rollo. 
Wait for me, dude. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. <laughs> Chapter 2. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Oh, thank you. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. This also reminds me of uh, Night in the Woods, and that's exactly how Eustune uh, described it to me. He goes, it's like Night in the Woods, but a choose-your-own-adventure book. Which, I mean, I can see it. It's pretty fun. Hello, people of Beacon Pines. What are you guys up to? Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Excited for the big festival? Oh, um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty alright. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure and invite all of your little friends. I couldn't keep Rolo away if I tried. Excellent! Sorry, Luca. I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that. Ho oh, now! Left side's a little low. Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn. Can't talk now. Very busy with preparations. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> Doesn't look busy. Oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I... It's Mayor Val... <sighs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. Huh? It's nothing. Keep at it. Alright, what can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just saying hi, I guess. <laughs> well, good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. See you later, pal. You have fun. What you doing over here? Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Mr. Sinclair. Bah, don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? How's the napping today? Crummy as always. <laughs> Used to have a perfectly nice view from here perennial harvest with that monstrosity of a building in the way. Why don't you just move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? If it's a showdown they want, I ain't gonna be the one who blinks. Alrighty then. Can't argue with the man who's determined, I guess. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it, or we pound you. Yup. Yeah, but mom said... Yeah, but... Yeah, but... If I had a nickel for every yeah, but... I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. Don't, pull, don't bully the poor little rabbit. He ain't doing nothing to you. What's up, dog? Hey, Mr. Van Horn. Do you have a moment? It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week at Perennial Harvest. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Wonderful. It won't happen again. If we're going to be on a first-name basis, then you can call me Pete. Oh, nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. 
gosh, she's excited to be a part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about newfound fountains and phone booths. We're gonna change the world. It all starts here in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Uh, huh? Anyway, I'd better get... Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? You bet. If we're gonna change this town, we need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. Haha. <laughs> Changing the world is intense. So what you say? Could you answer a few questions? Well, I guess if it's quick. Wonderful. Open to answering a few quick questions. One down. See? It's not that hard, is it? Oh, okay. We're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? I've never really thought about it before. Perfect! It's the only place I've lived. See? That wasn't so painful. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Was it? Uh, I guess not. Huzzah! Our first three questions answered in record time. Are you literally writing down everything? <laughs> Maybe. Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. We can save the rest for your thoughts. Of, for rest of your. Oh my gosh. <sighs> we can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits! Later, dude. Alright, Rolo. We're coming, buddy. Just hang on. Oh, hello, friend. Hey, Jetson. Is the line playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Time to think of it. I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. But hey, it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me. If you ever want his chair back, I've taken a stand in recently. It keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Eh, I guess so. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Mm -hmm. What's up, Dad? Go pick out your bait from the tackle box, Buckaroo. Alright. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Tickle. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Oh, that's cool. You get a little little shimmer on the end of your rod. Give it a good cast now. Yeah. And we're fishing. Oh. And we're fishing. Oh. You'll have to reel it in a bit faster. Or your catch will lose interest. <laughs> get more bait. Try jump. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? What fish could resist a nice fish uh shoestring? Oh, hey, we can jump the enter, I guess. Oh. oh come on. Hey, we got a boot. What do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, wherever it is, I hope that other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. <laughs> Me and you both, little man. Me and you both. We'll try to go. gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Of course, of course. Yeah. Oh, let's 
takes me back to see a thieves fishing. Ducky! Well, I'll be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. Cried for days. I told you it'd turn up. <laughs> well, I found it now, at least. That was cool. Keep out. Rollo, my man, what's happening? What are we doing today? Okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. That place has been empty since... Since the foul harvest. Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rollo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? Sort of accidentally. <laughs> and you jumped in and said it was your fault before my pa throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rollo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. Let's go! And we never saw him again. The end. Yee! Wait for me, dude. I got short little legs. Saw a thing. Oh, nice! Just chilling like a villain. All right, gotta go get Trollo. He runs fast. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. All right, buddy, be safe. What's good, people? What you doing over here? Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. Beacon, beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Martin Luca. What's the day I have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about... News? The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs no one. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rollo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm. Rollo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing. And change is a dangerous animal. Change. Change, change, change. Hey, Mrs. Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. No, oh, thank you. You kind of look like. Could oh. often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wander down the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh, oh, this is getting good. You kind of look like B from Night in the Woods. Or B's mother. Luca, just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. Rendezvous this is an important Roxy. turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. 
Well, now I'm just rambling. <laughs> Where were we? Have you seen my blockhead brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, not really, no. Can't say I have. I said no. You know, like a liar. Can't say or won't say. Roxy, would I lie to you? Yes. Luca, wait up, I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rolo. So, we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo. Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What, are you not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? Get in trouble with Rollo, yeah, buddy. Don't mind me, just over here lurking, uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having today, eh? Couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Roxy, I'm gonna level with you. I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. We all gotta pick up the slack since the foul harvest. Almost every carrot I dig, almost every carrot I dig up is rotten, and the rest look like they were hit with Hank Atomic Shrinko Ray. All the more reason to keep on digging. There's gotta be more to life than just puny carrots. Look, Roxy, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I haul you home myself. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Uh oh Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Be a little chill. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. A little chill. Come on, Roxy. It's the first day of summer. The sun's shining, and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Oh, rats. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. A full report! Investigate the Valentine warehouse alone. So, Fitz, what are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, my man. Oh, look at you, just being chill. Chilling like a villain. Alright. Let's try to find the factory. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do given time, Sharper Valentine. A bit much, if you ask me. Indulgent. Hey man, a guy with a lot of time can do a lot of things. Hey Solomon! Apologies, no time for chit chat. Okay, bye. What's up, dog? What's going on? Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Oh, hey Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind me that she still owes me at that dance. A promise Gran regretted the second oh. it was made. You just remind her. Will do. 
She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go! Sweeter than any jam on earth. You, you have fun there, buddy. I'll see you later. Whoa, the woods. Oh, hello. What you doing? Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? Oh, sure. Bugs aren't that different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. If you're going into we Weep Wood, be careful where you step. No bug crutching. Got it. Oh. Have fun, little man. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Okay. No turning back now. Caution. Electrified fence. Is this that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rollo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rollo would do. A lot, I'm sure. So that he could rule out that option. <laughs> I'm definitely not touching that thing. Alright. Let's throw shit at it. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Hey. Yeet! Nice. That's two. One more to go. Yeah. Hey. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, moment of truth. Doink. See ya. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. I'm getting down with this music right here. Now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolla wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. Indeed there is. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. Emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Mm. The water looked almost diseased. Ugh. It flowed slowly into the woods. Mm. Investigate the Valentine Warehouse alone. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Uh-oh. Hello? Oh, shit. Shit. Shit! <laughs> The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about change. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. I was gonna say, that was dark as hell, holy shit. 
think we've got to go back to this one. In the past, I found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. <laughs> In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Oh, make a break for it! What have you done? Ah! Did that little shit just kick me? Run all you want, little twerps! You gotta come home eventually! Oh, sorry! Investigate the Valentine Warehouse with Rollo. Sorry about that. Rollo can get overexcited sometimes. Solomon Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine Fortune. Mm. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. <laughs> A town full of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking any time anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter. How are you doing? Me? Yes. With all that business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all. No. That is truly a shame. Shame. Your grandmother has taken residence to keep house. Yeah. And how is that going? We mostly stay out of each other's way. You make it sound like she's rarely home. It's not like that. She just has a lot to do. Mm-hmm. She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to make ends meet. Indeed. Well, count your blessings. It's better to have a caretaker who is rarely around. In lieu of one who tries to compensate by smothering you with attention. That doesn't sound so bad. Trust me when I say, it's best to rely on yourself. Family has a way of creating more problems than they solve. Oh, hello there. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Oh, oh. Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that again. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, Harris. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. You're a valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Bye, Solomon. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Try and sneak past this guy. Look at my boy. Hold up a dick. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nuncreed. Uh, kinda in a hurry right now. Make yourself scarce. <sighs> Boy's got too much of his father in him. Oh. Bye, buddy. Ooh. I win. Ooh. Little help. I am the champion! We were racing? Did that... Did that road get long? Like anything ever changes around here? It seemed... Longer! You're just lightheaded from running. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Has that sign always been there? Wait, what? Caution. Electrified fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we going to get around an electric fence? Don't worry. I've got this. Oh. Why did you do that? Paul always said you can figure out what the plan was when, you, when you're when you done. Great. Now what? 
Well, mm -hmm. I did my part and established that touching the fence is bad. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can handle it from here. Mm -hmm. I'll supervise. Mm -hmm. From a safe distance. Oh, oh, oh. oh, we already know we gotta throw shit. Oops. We gotta throw shit. There we go. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you're a genius! Thank you, thank you, I tried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that did it. Mm -hmm. Luca, mm -hmm. you never fail to impress. Oh, thanks, Rolo. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out. Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Mm -hmm. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Mm -hmm. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Rumble. Did you feel that? What? The excitement in the air? You bet your butt I did. Check out this puddle. That's not normal. And this hose. Oh man, the door's locked. Try harder. No dice. It won't budge. Oh well. This dumpster is new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. Can't really see what's in here. Who did all this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Roll up. It would be my honor to throw you in the trash. <laughs> Come on, Lady Luck. So what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Are those walkie-talkies? Just like Hank Atomic communicators. Do these actually work? Ground command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic. Ground command, you're coming in five by five. How, um... How are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. What was that? Someone's coming. Give me your hand. I'm trying. My hands are covered in squish. Scoot over. I'm coming in. Tell me you saw that. Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back. Get down. The boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. Oh gosh. Tell me that's not what I think it is. Luca. Do you know what separates one of the mill detectives from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat? When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Rolo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. What's it say? Bo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott? Deep Engineering? It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags? I 
I think it's just one name tag in a bag full of something else. Oh, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking! You're panicking! Rollo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude. I'm not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? Ah! Ah! I'm beginning to see the benefit of your run-for-our-lives plan. Right. We've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure that the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass. Rollo, I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three... He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3. Finding a Friend. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. I think that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed our start of Beacon Pines. Uh, I know I certainly am enjoying it so far. Um, it's a fun, cute little game, and uh, there's a lot of options. Each one we will explore um, until we get, hopefully, every ending. I actually don't know how many there are, uh, but we'll figure it out as we go along. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, and if you're new around these parts, why not press the big red subscribe button and ring that notification bell right next to it to be notified when the next episode of Beacon Pines comes out, or any other video that I make, or when we live stream. Um... Live streams are becoming a little more popular. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff that I'd like to live stream. Currently, we're playing Weird RPG on stream. Uh, so next time Weird RPG is streaming, why not come join and check it out? Anyways, guys, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye!